Life, as you know, is constant movement and change. Uh, 2023, a lot of things happened last year. You might not remember this, but there was a 7.8 Richter scale earthquake in Syria and Turkey in 2023 that killed over 59,000 people. I mean, it's insane. Ukraine war with Russia still, still drums on. The whole issue in Israel with Hamas and Hezbollah, just the amazing, bloody, crazy war that's ongoing. The huge division in our own country, politically, obviously. Anyone realize there's a political division in our country? <laughs> the whole gender debate that's going on, the economic instability, the violence. There was over 630 mass shootings in our country this year, more than days in the year. It, it's, it's crazy, anxiety, depression in our youth, uh, protesters over the Palestinian-Israeli situation going on all over the country, technological issues, this whole debate over AI and the cybersecurity world and the whole metaverse and, and robots that are becoming more human. I saw a couple of them walk in this morning, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> and they were on time. Th things are constantly changing. M maybe in 2023, something radically changed in your life. Maybe it was a death of a loved one. I know for myself, there were several funerals that I was involved with over 2023. In fact, my wife and I were at one just last week. Maybe it was a move. You, you, you moved from one location to another. Maybe you got married or, or maybe you went through a difficult breakup in a marriage or relationship. Maybe a child was born. I, I know for Lynn and I, we... We, we didn't have a child that was born, but we had a, another grandchild that was born, number 14. And they were all over for Christmas Day. <laughs> maybe you got a new job. Uh, maybe you got a prognosis from a doctor. Things change, don't they? Things change. But, but please hear this. Please listen. Some things never change. If you're a follower and one who has trusted in Jesus Christ, the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 13, I want to throw that verse up here, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. How great is that? Amen. That's not going to change. His grace is still sufficient. His love is still everlasting. His word is still true and sure. And his mercy is always there. In fact, the Bible says his mercies are new every morning. They're always new. It doesn't matter if it's 1824, 1924, or 2024. People then and now look to him, to Christ, for provision, for guidance, for, for purpose in life for peace, for salvation, for forgiveness, for love. The, the daily love and grace and steadfastness of God never changes. It's always there. It's always sufficient. See, see here, here's the thing. The daily rush and pull of life doesn't change. It can, it can be bumpy. It can go up and down. But, but, in, but in 2024, we'll, we'll face that. It does change all the time. We'll face, you and I will, in 2024, the good and the bad, the sorrows and the joys, the successes and the defeats. It's been that way since Adam and Eve were commanded to leave the garden. Relationships. How many of you know those aren't easy? You just had family over for Christmas. Come on. Marriages. How many here have a perfect one? <laughs> Mine was, was only hand raised. What's up with that? You have to work on it. 
Jobs can be stressful. Temptations are real. And sin has deadly consequences. And, and, and what's around the corner for us is, is always a bit uncertain. So how do you face, how do you enter, how do you begin a new year like 2024? Make a New Year's resolution. Well, Forbes Health Survey, the average resolution lasts 3.74 months. And that's a lot longer than mine have ever lasted. <laughs> 3.74 months is the average that a New Year's resolution lasts. Here, here are some of the top 10 things that people resolve to do in the new year. Save money. Lose weight. Get organized. Travel more. Learn a new skill or hobby. Quit smoking. Legal and illegal smoking. <laughs> Spend more time with family. Read more. Live a fuller life. So someone has said what, what a person needs is not so much a resolution as they do a revolution. A, a resolution is defined like this. If I make a resolution, it's a decision for or toward a future or a desired outcome. Okay, I want to lose 10 pounds. That's my resolution. You know, that's where I'm going to, that's my desire and that's the outcome I'm looking for. But a revolution is an overthrow of power where a whole new system is in control, where a radical change occurs. As an individual, I think as a church, if we go into 2024 with a resolution, well, we'll get what we can do or what we can provide. I will get out what I put in if I make a resolution. But if I go into 2024 with a revolution and say, okay, Lord, you be in control. You take over. Be, be willing to completely submit to him. Then we can see and experience what he can accomplish, what he can do through us and in us and in spite of us. The Jesus revolution. You know, last Sunday... Uh, someone came up, uh, gave this to my son and said, I want you to give it to Pastor John. It's a Time magazine. In fact, it was uh, my friend Darby who, who gave it. And uh, it's, it's dated June 21st, 1971. I don't know if you remember this magazine or if you're old enough to remember the Jesus Revolution. So aptly named because it wasn't a group of people who made a resolution. It was the Lord moving sovereignly by his spirit across the world, really, creating a revolution in people's lives, totally changing them. How many of you have seen the, the movie that Greg Laurie put out called Jesus Revolution? Anybody? Okay, cool. Well, that's what I'm talking about. In fact, I got a little clip I want you to see of Greg's film, The Revolution. Jesus, I know I'm a sinner. Lord Jesus, I know I'm a sinner. But you are the savior of the world. You are the savior of the world. I ask you to come into my life. I ask you to come into my life. I repent for my sins. I repent for all my sins. And I accept you as my Lord and savior, my God and friend. And I accept you as my Lord and savior, my God and my friend. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit.
So, so people who come to Christ, they don't just make a resolution. It's a revolution. Remember the old Beatles song? So say you want a revolution. <laughs> Kind of a, a sympathy clap. <laughs> God is a revolutionary God. Would you agree? I, I just want to read. You don't have to turn there. This is not my main passage, but I want you to listen to this from the book of Revelation. This is one thing that will happen in the future that is an amazing revolution. Revolution happens in the book of Revelation where it says, I saw a new heaven and a new earth. The first heaven and the first earth had passed away. Then I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people. And God himself will be with them and be their God. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There'll be no more death, no more sorrow, no crying. There'll be no more pain for the former things have passed away. And then he said on the throne said, behold, I make all things new. Write these words. They're true and they're faithful. Now that's amazing revolution where everything is made new. A new life, new beginning, no tears, no death, no sorrow, no pain. Uh, make all things new. And he said to me, it's done. I'm the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning and the end, and I will give of the fountain of the water of life freely to him who thirsts. And he who overcomes shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my child, the ultimate revolution, one day in heaven given by the Alpha and the Omega, a complete new system, if you will. But you say, well, John, that's great, but what about 2024? Well, Jesus gives what is new now. When you come to Christ, not a, not a resolution not a, well, I'm going to try harder this year, or I'm going to, you know, turn over a new leaf, or I'm going to be a better person, and, or these are the changes I'm going to make. No, Christ is a revolution in your life. One of my favorite verses in the New Testament is 2 Corinthians 5.17, and it says, if anyone, now I want to just say that word again, anyone, anyone, well, not me. No, anyone. If anyone is in Christ, he's a new creation. All things have passed away, and behold what? All things have become new. I would submit to you that that's a revolution. All things become new. It's amazing you have a new heart. I, I, I will write my words upon your heart. You have a new mind in Christ. You have a new start in Christ. You have a new family in Christ. You have a new freedom in Christ. You have a whole new identity, a whole new destiny, a whole new purpose, and a whole new power in Christ. It's, it's not like, oh, I'm going to turn over a resolution, try to be a, a better person, a better this, a better that. No, no, no. It's a whole new way of living. In, in, the, in, the, in the book of Philippians, if you have a... Uh, a Bible, go there with me. Chapter 3. Philippians chapter 3, beginning with verse 12, the Apostle Paul makes this statement. Not that I have already attained or am already perfected, but I, I press on that I may lay hold of that for which Christ Jesus has also laid hold of me. I, I, I want to completely experience, he says, all that Christ laid hold of me for, and I want to lay hold to him. All that he has made new. And, and he goes on and he says, brethren, I, I don't count myself 
to have apprehended, but one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead, I press toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. I, I'm moving forward, he says. I'm laying hold of him, letting, letting go and letting Christ. Letting go of the old life, of old attitudes, the old baggage, the old hurts, the old fears, the old habits. You know, in, in, in Israel, if you ever get a chance to go there, I hope we get to go there again. There's, there's a site you can go to there in Jerusalem. And it's called the Pool of Bethesda. It it's, actually means sheep gate. And there was a pool there where people would go and the, there was a, a legend that when the water was stirred by angels that you could get healed. And Jesus was at that pool one day and, and there was a man lying there. And in the Gospel of John it says there was a certain man who had an infirmity for 38 years. 38 years is a long time. And when Jesus saw him lying there and knew that he had already had been in that condition a long time, he asked him a question. Do you want to be made well? The sick man answered him, sir, I have no one to put me in the pool when the water stirred. And while I'm trying to get there, another steps down before me. And Jesus said, well, why don't you just make a resolution to move closer? No, here's what Jesus said. Rise, take up your bed, and walk. And everything changed. Everything. His response to Jesus was, I, I don't have anyone to help me. I don't have this. I don't have that. And we can all make excuses. You don't know my background. You don't know the family I grew up in. You don't know my husband. You don't know my wife. You, you don't know what it's like to be me. You don't know my friends. You don't know my family. I'm not ready or it's too late for me. I'm too old. A good pastor friend once said, and you've probably heard this before, if you're good at making excuses, that's all you'll be good for is making excuses. This man made an excuse. Well, you know, I don't have it. And Jesus said, do you want to be healed? And I would ask you today, do you want a revolution in your life or a resolution? I read this little illustration the other day. It says, in 1523, an English animal trainer named John Fitzherbert said the dog must be trained when he's young or else he'll not be trained. For it's hard to make an old dog find a new scent. Today, we've summarized his insight into a well-known adage, you can't teach an old dog new. Some of you have heard this. <laughs> now, it sounds good, but is it true? Well, on Discovery Channel, some show called Mythbusters, they, they took this time-worn adage and wanted to find out if it was true. So... The host found a pair of aging Alaskan Malmutes who didn't know a single trick in the book, known for their stubbornness. In dog years, they were 53 years old, qualifying them for the old dog category. And after four days of training, four days, Bobo and Cece Proves Fitzberg flat wrong. Each could heal, each could sit, each could lie down, each could stay, each could shake upon command. The conclusion, you can teach an old dog new tricks. And here's the deal. You're not a dog, I don't think, and Jesus is not a trick. Amen? Amen. Then we can all be changed. If anyone be in Christ, old, young, in between, if anyone be in Christ, he's a new creation. That's the challenge. In, in 1 Thessalonians, if you have a Bible, in 1 Thessalonians, there's a great passage of Scripture in chapter 5. 
It says, but concerning the times and the seasons, brethren, you have no need I should write to you. For you yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so comes as a thief in the night. For when they say peace and safety, then sudden destruction comes upon them as labor pains upon a pregnant woman, and they shall not escape. He says, the day of the Lord comes like a thief in the night. This could be the year that the Lord comes. And people say, oh, they, they say that every year. They, they say that all the time. Well, one thing for certain, right? We're closer than we've ever been before. Amen. So what's the challenge? Well, Paul continues. But you, brethren, are not in darkness so that this day should overtake you like a thief. You're sons of light and sons of day. We are not all of the night or the darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as others do, but let us watch and be sober. For those who sleep, sleep at night, and those who get drunk are drunk at night. But let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love and the helmet of salvation. For God did not appoint us to wrath, but to obtain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, that whether we wake, sleep, we should live together with him. Therefore, comfort each other and edify one another, just as you are doing. When God revolutionizes a life, when you give your life to Jesus Christ, please listen, tune in. He calls us to live as a true believer. No longer are you of the night. No longer are you of darkness. If there's anything I could say to you and me as we get ready to step into a new year, I would say this. Be a true Christian. Be a true light. A true witness for Christ. Don't, don't make excuses or say, well, you know, or, or come up with, with reasons why you can't. Let, let me encourage you to be completely awakened and alive in Christ. That's what we're called to do, to be a light and strength for the name of Christ. As the day draws near, he says in verse 11, comfort each other, edify one another as you're doing. See, here, here's the call for you and I in 2024, if you're a believer. Comfort others. Build them up. Edify. Make one another stronger in the Lord. He goes on and he says in verse 12, and, and we urge you, brethren, to recognize those who labor among you, you who are over you in the Lord, and admonish you, appreciate and encourage each other faithfully. In verse 13, he says, and esteem them very highly, and for love, for works, be at peace among yourselves, be loving and tenderhearted and caring toward one another. You say, yeah, but John, have you been on Highway 98? I have. <laughs> In verse 14, he says, for we believe that Jesus died and rose again. Even so, God will bring those who sleep in him. Now we exhort you, brethren, warn those in verse 14 who are unruly, who comfort the fainthearted, uphold the weak, be, be patient with all. That's a challenge, isn't it? Warn people who go off track. Have you ever done that? Warn somebody when you see them heading in the wrong direction. Be patient. Help the weak, he says. Be, be loving and truthful. And then he goes on to say in verse 15, see that no one renders evil for evil to anyone, but always pursue what is good both for yourselves and for Others. In other words, stop trying to get even all the time. Stop having a chip on your shoulder. And, and leave the hurts behind. Leave the evil behind. Have a heart of forgiveness and, and restoration. Let, let this be part of your revolution in your life. See, here's what Paul says. So, so as a believer, we've been called to comfort one another, to encourage one another to love one another, to forgive one another, to appreciate one another, to support one another, to edify one another. Th this is what it looks like to walk and live in Christ. 
Allow a spirit and a heart of forgiveness in your life. Let it flow out of your newness in Christ. You can't do it in your own strength. In verse 16 of 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, he says this, Rejoice always. Rejoice always. Worship him. Rejoice in him. Don't mope around and be bummed out all the time. My wife always tells me as I'm growing older, don't be a grumpy old man. Because <laughs> it's easy to fall into that track, especially when you have 14 grandkids. <laughs> you got your feet on the couch or whatever it would be. John, don't be a grumpy old man. Some of you said amen. <laughs> Appreciate and encourage each other. Be, be faithful. Don't mope around and be bummed out all the time. Re rejoice always, it says. In verse 17, he says, pray always without ceasing. In other words, have an ongoing conversation with the Lord. It never has to stop. When you're going down Highway 98, and you're looking at all these different tags from different places, instead of having a conversation with them, say, Lord, help me through this crazy nightmare. <laughs> Talk to the Lord. Have, have an ongoing conversation day in and day out. Pray always. It, it, it never has to stop. He, he says in verse 18, in everything give thanks, not for everything, but in everything, give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Don't you like thankful people? We, we, we had two of our grandsons spend the night last night, a, a six-year-old and a four-year-old. They got up at 5.30. Oh, Lynn says 4 o'clock, because I didn't get up. I, I, but I heard, I heard them up. And, and when I did finally walk out, one of the little guys with just a big smile on his face, good morning, Pop. I thought, he's so excited and thankful. Well, of course he was. He's eating a big cinnamon roll and a cup of hot chocolate. <laughs> but but be, a, be a thankful person, a rejoicing person, a praying person, and everything, not for everything, but in everything, give thanks. Well, what, what a great thing for, for, for the Apostle Paul to remind us of as we're stepping into a new year. How, how, yeah, but John, how do you do it? Well, he says in verse 18, don't quench the spirit. Allow the Holy Spirit to be in you and to fill you and, and to continue to remind you who you are. Not quenching the Spirit, but, but being yielded to God's Spirit, not doing everything in your own strength, but allowing Him to strengthen you. Let Him speak to you. Don't, don't harden your heart to His Word or, 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 or to, to this revolution that Christ has brought into your life. Be open to what He wants you to do. Verse 21, it says, test all things and hold fast to what is good. Examine what's going on in your life. And those things that aren't good, get rid of them. There's a lot of different things going on around in the world. Examine what is of the Lord, what is not. Cultivate that which is real. You and I live in a culture that will tell you all kinds of lies. But be a true worshiper of God and, and focus on that which is real and that which is true. And he, he says in verse 22, abstain from every form of evil. And this I would say to you, I'd say to myself as well. Stop doing things that you know believers should not be involved in. It'll grieve the Holy Spirit. And finally, he says in verse 24, he who calls you is faithful. He who calls you is faithful, who also will do it. And I charge you, he says, by the Lord, that this epistle be read to all the brethren, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ 
be with you. He who calls you is faithful. The grace of the Lord be with you. He has set you apart. In verse 23, brethren, he says, pray for us. Spirit, soul, and body set apart. In fact, in verse 23, he says, now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely and may your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. And, and, and the word sanctify means to be set apart. Set apart for him. Cleanse daily, use daily, fill daily, surrender to him, faithful to him. Let him work through your life. Enjoy the body of Christ and the fellowship of Christ. Fellowship together in his word and in ministry. I, I would say it like this. Christ doesn't want to be a resolution in your life. He wants to be a revolution of power in your life. Another definition of revolution would be that which just goes round and round, like a spaceship goes around in orbit, a revolution, like a hands on a clock that just go round and round. That's a revolution. But it's the same old thing every day. Tick tock, tick tock, tick tock, another revolution. I would submit to you, Christ has called us to a different type of revolution. Instead of living life doing the same old thing every day, every day, every day, he's called you to a new life, an exciting life. If anyone be in Christ, he is a new creation. And here's, here's my challenge for you and for me this year. Start being a new creation in Christ. Start living for him. Start, start, start being one of those people that, that, you know, prays always, rejoices always, gives thanks always, who, who edifies, who comforts, who encourages, who appreciates, who supports, and who forgives. If Christ has called you to himself, and I believe for most of us here he has, then live in this new revolution, not, not a resolution. I mean, today... The last day of the year, here's the question. Do you know for sure that Christ has created a revolution in your life? If he has, then he's calling you and I to live like that. How many would agree with me that in the culture and the world that we live in, that we need more believers to be light and salt in this generation? Amen? Amen? And you know what? Wherever your circle of influence is, that's you. That's you. Christ has called you to be light and salt. He, he's called you to be a new creation, a new mind, a new heart, a new spirit, a new love, a, a whole new life. And it's not dependent on your strength. It's dependent on you being dependent on him. What an amazing thing it is. I, I, I remember, I, I'm part of this. I, I, didn't get, I, I didn't get saved in 1971 in the Jesus Revolution, but it was around 1972 or 3. I didn't hear about Calvary Chapels till 1983. But boy, did Jesus do a revolution in my life. High school dropout, using drugs, drifting around the country with my older brother who was a pro surfer and had no knowledge of church or Jesus Christ. And he came knocking on the door of my heart. I thought, this is weird. My brother started going to church. That was even weirder. And then he would start inviting friends and people started going. I'll never forget the first night I went, and, and that was the night that I made my first public profession of Jesus Christ. And you know what happened? God began a revolution in my life. 
He pulled me out of the world of drugs. He pulled me out of the world of immorality. He pulled me out of the world of feeling sorry for myself. I always felt sorry for myself. Never had a real dad. He left when I was 13. I always felt like I got ripped off. So I was always this guy like, well, you don't understand. Da, 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 da. And the Lord finally said, John, you're a new creation in Christ. Old things have passed away. Your, your, your father's not your problem. He's a victim of the enemy, just like you were. And you would be just like him if I hadn't saved you. Amen. I thought, you're right. And so, so here I am from a broken family, all this craziness and stuff going on, and, and, and God gave me a brand new life. You say, well, John, that's good for you. But it's also good for you. Amen. I didn't create it. It wasn't like, hey, you know what? One day I'm going to pull myself up by my bootstraps and I'm going to become a pastor. Are you kidding? <laughs> Who would choose that? <laughs> but God said, no, I have a different plan for your life. And it's not to be bummed out all the time. It's not to look, you know, God, God gave me a whole new past and a whole new future. My past now includes Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. All that God did in the past is, is part of my pilgrimage coming to Christ because Christ came out of them. Amen. I'm a part of that world. And, and I have a bright new future. Who, would, who ever thought that I would marry someone and end up being married for 46 years and have 14 grandkids and they'd all come over to my house and they would actually like me? <laughs> That's a miracle. <laughs> and we would have crazy fun on Christmas. And God would send my wife and I all over the world, be involved in missions, and we'd see people getting saved. We'd help plan a church. And all this stuff happened because of Jesus Christ who says, if anyone, anyone, Lord, does that include me? Yeah, you're anyone. I am? Yeah, you're anyone. If anyone be in Christ, he can be a new creature. Amen. And old things can pass away. All those old hurts, all the bitterness and the unforgiveness. Lord, I got ripped off when I was a kid. No, no, no. no. All things become new. Old things pass away. And the wonderful news of Jesus Christ in 2024 is that anyone, anyone, if anyone be in Christ, not that anyone can make a Resolution as they step in. Oh, they can, but they don't usually keep them. 3.74 months and it's over. But if anyone be in Christ, it's a revolution, a new power, a new system, a whole new life in Jesus Christ. What an amazing thing. You say, well, John, is it real? It is for millions and millions and millions of people who trust and believe in Jesus Christ and are willing to surrender their life to him. What, a, what an amazing thing it is. Doesn't matter how old or how young, if, if anyone. Well, I, I'm, I'm too old. You can't teach a, an old dog new tricks. That, that's been busted. And, and also, you're not a dog. And this is not a trick. This is Jesus Christ who lived and died and rose again so that you and I, listen, so that you and I would be able to say, hey, if, if anyone, even I, if anyone be in Christ, he's a new creation. What an awesome thing. That, that, that you and I could be able to put behind us all our sins, all our mistakes, all, all the things that we wrestle with and, and feel insecure about and, and, and feel trapped in. Jesus says, no, no, no. W would you like to be healed? Yeah, but Lord, see, this happened and this happens. This always happens. No, no. I asked you, do you want to be healed? Yeah. Rise up. Take up your bed. You're a new creation. What, see, here's the thing, as I've learned, as I, and, I'll, and I'll stop rambling here in just a minute. I've learned this as I studied through the, through the Bible, through the New Testament. And what a crazy thing. God took this high school dropout, sent him to Bible college in the seminary, and, and actually, actually learned something. 
And one of the things I learned was, as I read through the New Testament, hey, wait a minute. I'm that blind man who couldn't see. I'm that lame man who couldn't walk. I'm that leper who was so unclean. I'm that guy. All these are pictures of me, Lord. He goes, yeah, you're getting it, John. You're those guys. And what I did for them, I can do for anyone. If anyone be in Christ, he's a new creation. Old things pass away, and behold, all things become new. It truly is, listen, it truly is a Jesus revolution that totally changes your life. 